Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to talk about a topic which I'm sure is interesting to many of you, and that is AI and specifically Notions AI and how it compares to ChatGPT. So we are still quite new to using AI and so we're by no means experts on this topic, but this is just our experience and how we feel as users. So the first thing we wonder about when we compare Notions AI versus ChatGPT is exactly what kind of machine learning technology Notion AI is using. So we did a quick search and we found this article by Thomas Frank and we're not really sure when this was written so it could be old and not current information. But according to him, he says that Notion AI is likely using OpenAI's GPT-3 language processing model to generate text though this has not been 100% confirmed. So if this is the case, then it would be slightly behind compared to the current free chat GPT, which is GPT 3.5. So that's certainly something to consider as you weigh your two options with Notion AI, uh, comparing it to chat GPT and whether Notion AI is worth it or not. But if any of you know exactly what kind of technology Notion AI is using, feel free to write in the comment below. So yeah, if it's GPT-3, that the number we think means that the data that it has been trained on is slightly behind in terms of the, the time frame. So GPT-3.5 might know more current information compared to GPT-3. So you might get better responses with ChatGPT. The second thing that you'll probably want to consider when thinking about Notion AI compared to ChatGPT is the pricing. And in that sense, Notion AI is cheaper than the premium ChatGPT. So the free GPT 3.5 uh, is obviously free, but Notion, if it's using OpenAI's GPT 3, then it's $10 a month. But if you wanted to use GPT 4, then it's $20 a month. So it costs twice as much to use the premium version of ChatGPT compared to Notion's AI. So that's certainly something to consider. So now we'd like to do similar things in both AIs just to see the kinds of responses we get. So if we go to Notion's AI and let's say we want to summarize an article, let's see what happens. So we'll go to this article by IBM about artificial intelligence, since that's what we're talking about today, and highlight the text to the title. And if we put it in, we get the article. And then let's ask Notion AI to summarize this. So if we go to ask AI, and there's also a keybind for this, which is command J or control J. And then you can ask it to make, uh, to summarize from the selection. So these are actually quite useful because with ChatGPT, it's way more like a chat bot. So you are just asking into a box without much prompts. But with Notions AI, you have these options, which makes it way easier for beginners. So if we click summarize here, it's gonna generate a summary. And then you can choose to replace section, insert below, continue writing, or make it longer, try again, or discard. So in this case, let's just insert it below so we can compare it. And then now we'll ask ChatGPT to also make a summary. So let's go here and paste in the article. And then we'll ask it to summarize this article. So now it's generating a summary. And in general, whenever you ask ChatGPT to summarize, it's way longer than Notion AI. So if you're looking for a concise summary, I think Notion AI is the way to go. But if you're looking for sort of a better summary in the sense that it includes all the information you need, then ChatGPT might give you a better answer in that case. So those are the examples when we compare what it does to a text. And summarizing is actually one of the most uh, useful functions of AI that we think is really useful if you're trying to process a lot of information quickly. 
so that uh, you can get what you need to know very fast without having to read large amounts of text. So how about we ask it to write a blog post about AI? So let's go with slash AI and we'll ask AI to write a blog post about artificial intelligence in let's say 500 to 750 words. So we see a pretty good article that has come up now with everything you need. Let's see what kind of article we get if we ask ChatGPT. So we'll put in the same thing. So write an article or a blog post about artificial, artificial intelligence or artificial intelligence in 500 to 750 words. So let's see what we get. So already, I think we can see that ChatGPT tends to enjoy writing more flowery language, let's say. So they try to be more creative in approach than Notion's AI, especially when writing articles. Of course, we wouldn't really use these articles straight up anyway, because it's not quite natural. But if we compare the two, it seems that ChatGPT's articles are always a little bit more real in the sense that it sounds more human and there is a little bit more character to ChatGPT. But if we compare Notion AI's article, then it's very straightforward. So it says artificial intelligence is an advanced technology that has been making waves in recent years. So that's the first line of this one, but comparatively here, it says, in today's rapidly evolving technological landscape, one term that consistently grabs the spotlight is artificial intelligence or AI. It's a buzzword that has not only captured the imagination of tech enthusiasts, but has also become an integral part of our daily lives. So it's very flowery and sometimes quite long, the sentences. So you have to ask it to write slightly shorter sentences in ChatGPT, but I think Notion seems to write it in smaller sentences. But at the same time, it's a little bit unnatural in the sense that it can be quite boring. So whatever ChatGPT answers is usually more interesting than Notion AI. So maybe Notion AI is more practical, but ChatGPT could give you some interesting answers. And then we want to highlight sort of the things that you can do in Notion AI that you cannot do at all in ChatGPT. So those are related to the databases. So if we just delete all of this and we make a table view database, table view database, new database, then we name it resources. So this is where Notion AI really shines. So if you click this plus button here, you can make properties which are AI properties. So let's say, for example, this AI summary, you can click that. And then we have this AI summary property. So what this means is whatever we type into this page is going to get summarized in the in this property field. So let's say that we took the article again here. And then we go here and we're just gathering resources. So this is what is artificial intelligence. And then we ask here to update and we are going to get a summary. So imagine if you have like a resource database and you don't want to spend the time writing summaries for every single article. You don't even have to read the article. You can actually just get a basic summary from the table view database. So you know sort of the basic information you need to know and whether it's actually worth reading the text or if you want to go further in and dig deeper, you can, but it's just very useful. And we can also imagine that if you use Notion's Web Clipper, this is like a really fast way to gather a lot of resources and compare your data. Although one thing that you should be aware of is that AI tends to give you results that you want to see. 
So you should always fact check your information. So this is faster, but at the same time, they might have some false information. So yeah, the strongest point with Notion AI is definitely these AI properties. And I think there's a huge potential there in the amount of information you can store and see and do things with. Those are some of our impressions about Notion AI versus ChatGPT and Notion AI's strengths as well. Do you use ChatGPT? Do you use Notion AI? We'd love to hear from you. Please let us know in the comments what your impression and experiences have been like. And we hope to see you in the next video.